Hey, we're here at uh, beautiful Blakesburg, <laughs> Iowa with uh, Roger Rothar at his home here. And Roger is uh, one of the, I suppose you'd say charter members, uh, founders or whatever of the original members, long time pioneers uh, in bow hunting and PBS. And uh, okay, Roger, you, uh, you've obviously been in bow hunting for a long time. You're how old now? 73. And uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started in bow hunting and then uh, maybe work into how you got involved, uh, you know, with bows and arrows and in, in later uh, stages, how you learned and uh, got involved with PBS. Well, uh, as most kids, I had a, a bow of some kind to shoot ever since I can remember, you know, even if it was a stick with a string on, but to get really serious about it, it would have been uh, after I graduated from high school in 1956. Uh, That's when I got a job and I could afford to buy a good bow and I bought a bear grizzly and right from the factory for $39. And I got started really kind of interested more in really serious about trying to kill a deer and it took me quite a while to do it but nonetheless that was basically how I got started then there was at that time there was a pretty good uh, uh, a pretty good uh, influx of bow hunting it became popular archery became quite popular through the National Field Archery Association and so on and we had a local archery club that got started and we had uh, one of the biggest archery clubs in, in uh, Ohio, it actually was the biggest. We hosted the Ohio State Championships in the 60s, uh, three or four years in a row. And I got into field archery, you know, that too. But of course, we would bow hunt at the same time and uh, late in the 50s. It, but it took me into the 60s. We started going to Pennsylvania and Michigan out of state because Ohio had virtually no deer at that time. So that's, you know, how I kind of got started. But the PBS itself, I think they started that in the early 1960s, about that same time. I got acquainted with it, heard about it when it first started. I didn't get acquainted about it for a couple more years, and I think I joined in 1965. I think I'm the probably the oldest living member uh, in the club right now. Uh, there are older people, but I'm the oldest living member. Um, Who did, what, how did you how did you learn about it? I mean, how did you I learned it? about it kind of through? I was interested in in uh, the aspects of expanding the bow hunting, and in, in, in Ohio again, it was new. And there weren't very many people doing it, and uh, I was kind of interested in the, the the development of it for conservation purposes and all. And even at that early age, I was I was uh, concerned about such things. Of course, you know, in fifty in in fifty six, I was eighteen years old. So now we're talking sixty five. That's seventy more years. I was in my early twenties, so I wasn't a kid any longer. No, but, but as far as PBS now, did you hear? Did you read about it in a magazine, or did somebody? I tell met you? I met Bill Carlos. He was one of the originals, I think. He may not have been one of the founders, but he was one of the originals in the PBS. And then I got acquainted with Don Thompson. After I became a member, I was a secretary for a few years, and I met Don Thompson, who was one of the founders, and I got to know him really well. Got a lot of information from him and that, and Tom Shohanis. He designed the PBS logo, for those who don't know it, the patch. He, he, he now, was an artist. Were these guys from Ohio? Don Thompson was from West Virginia. Not too far away. Not too far away. That's where they first organized, was in West Virginia. The PBS oh. first organized in West Virginia. And the first meetings, as I recall, Don Thompson telling me, I wasn't there, of course, at that time, but telling me Fred Bear was there, Bob Swinehart was there, uh, uh, of course, Don himself, Tom Shapinas was one of the fine founders, and there were several other people he kept mentioning. One was Chief somebody, Chief... <laughs> not Compton. <laughs> not Compton. Uh, there was another another fellow, and then there's... Was there any specific people in bow hunting and back in those days that you, look, you looked up to at the time? And uh, if so, how did they influence you or your thinking? Uh, not necessarily PBS members, but just bow hunters that had their heads on straight. Well... You know, there again, uh, everybody had the, the Fred Bear and, and the Howard Hill and some of that, but I really, they were out of my class and I didn't regard them that much one way or the other. I, I come to know Fred Bear later on and thought way more of him later on than I did earlier because I didn't, you know, he's out of my class. But there was a few local people when we had our archery club there, there was one guy had killed a deer 
in the whole club. One. He was the hero of everyone. He was the and club. He, and he, what he done? Yeah, he was the only. He was the hero because he had killed a deer, and he launched a, a wooden arrow out of a with a bull old broadhead on it at a deer about eighty yards away in old doe and hit it right in the head. <laughs> and he was the hero because he'd killed a deer with a bow nobody else had. So, but he wasn't one of my heroes. But nonetheless, uh, I got to, to know Bill Carlos again. I mentioned him. He had been around he, longer than I had. He'd been in hunted. An, he killed an antelope in in South Dakota, which or no, in Nebraska, which at that time was a was a tough chore. There wasn't that many there, and it was tough hunting. He killed a nice a Pope and young antelope there, and and he'd been to Alaska back when. In fact, is I think he hunted when was there at the same time that, who's got the world record caribou? Um, Art Cragness? Art Cragness. He, got, he met Art Cragness in Alaska at that time when Art Cragness killed that caribou. Bill hey, you know, to be honest, just between you and I, you know, I doubt he still has that world record caribou, but maybe he does. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know, doubt it's know. been beat since then. You know, but but at he that had time, it for a long time. Right, yeah. but Bill was one of my heroes. Bill was a guy that had been there, had done it, he did it. On a working man's situation, like I was, you know, so it gave me the the notion that that I, as a working man working in a factory, and that I could go on some of these hunts and do this kind of thing too. Whereas the Fred Bear side of it, you kind of is above yeah. your, you know, your income yeah. level and that sort of thing to even do that stuff. You know, you brought Tom Tobias was one for, Tom Tobias was another one. There was a woodsman. He's probably the best woodsman that I was ever around. That man. I've could, heard that before. He could track, you know, like they say, he could track a. Yeah a bear across you know across the rock but yeah. he would go live with the animals and yeah. hunt them when he hunted elk and stuff he was a, not a very good shot he's pretty good game shot but not really a very good bow shot but he didn't have to be if he'd hit one in the foot he would track it down and get it starting well, i was around him stuff. quite a lot and when we were when we had that first get together out in northwestern crawford nebraska with pbs hunt out there back in the early 70s What's some of your uh, early memories of uh, PBS, uh, either gathering or some fond memories uh, since belonging to PBS? Well, people, couple, places, things. Yeah, there's a couple that stands out a little bit. Now, our first meetings we got together, Don Thompson organized a groundhog hunt every spring down in West Virginia, over by Buckeye, West Virginia. He was acquainted with a family that had land down there that had been given to him by George Washington, the family that was still in their in their uh, you know in their possession. A lot of the land had been disposed of. They still had several hundred acres, and it was just full of groundhogs. And we'd go down there and have a meeting, and get together and so on, and, and we'd hunt groundhogs. Now there was about sixty members in PBS at that time. That's all. And, uh, and that there was, was no good. such a thing as a regular or associate. At that time, no, no associates at all. At that time, just all regular members, and it was you know it was some great memories down there. It was, it was some really good you know some good times and good associations with people down there. On now, that. this is an annual thing, one weekend a year, or we just did multiple it. times. We did it one weekend. He'd do it for one weekend a year. Okay. We did it three or four or five years. I don't know how many before you know it got bigger and you know went beyond that. Then the next thing was the the meetings in Nebraska when we had the hunt and the get together like I talked about earlier, you know, by Crawford, Nebraska, uh, with the gang out there. Now, that was the later bunch. That was Kiko and Toad and, and uh, uh, Laverne Wook and the gang from Iowa here. Plus, it was also Tom Chapinus and the, and the originators. Most of them were there. Marion James was there just before Bow Hunter Magazine ever started. And we had that thing together, and I remember. Yeah. yeah. Well, besides all that, the fun stuff we had there like that, which make good memories too, we got into some kind of serious items uh, with bow hunting. Uh, one of the biggest was the poisoned arrow. That was, uh, in the 60s, was a big issue, and it was really being promoted by some, some big names in archery to, in order to make money off of it. And... Uh, uh, you know, we, we kind of kept an eye on it, kind of tried to stay on top of it and keep it shut down. And we did pretty much, it, I don't know, we can take credit for it, but I think probably eventually it would have faded out anyhow because it just isn't an ethical thing. Most people would not go for it no matter what. So the thing.